Welcome to our short demo on the current capabilities of HCMX FinOps Express, where I'm going to start with demonstrating our aggregated cloud cost reports. Cloud cost reports form the basis of HCMX FinOps Express. They can be used for showback, chargeback, and for investigation of spent anomalies. In a nutshell, these reports help you to accurately identify the who, the what, the where, and the when of your cloud spend. And we're going to demonstrate this with a simple example via this report, where we see that historically, our cloud spend has been around 150K per month, but then in July, something caused it to spike up, and we want to figure out why that was. So the when is self-evident, but let's see if as a second step, we can easily figure out the what of the overspend. So figure out what the extra money was spent on. And the best place to start for such an investigation are our top level pivots, where we have a pivot for spend by product that shows a clear breakdown at the highest level of spend over products. Now the products that we happen to be working with today for our demo are compute, database services, and blob storage, but they can be any product that your organization is using. Now here in our example, we clearly see that the cause of our overspend is to be found in the context of the compute product, represented by the dark blue block in the stack that blew up significantly between June and July. Now we're going to dive a lot deeper into that block in a minute, but before we do that, I also want to show you our top level pivot for the where or the location of your cloud spend. And this can be important because some locations are definitely more expensive than others, but clearly this is not the issue here for our demo use case, since no new regions were added in July. In fact, all overspend happened in the US East region, which was in use prior to the anomaly. And then I also want to show you the pivot for the who of the cloud spend. And the who here is represented by the cloud account. So for our example, we have now established that all overspend was done by the cloud accounts that start with 3456 and 5678. Okay, so earlier we learned from our top level pivots that the overspend happened for the compute product. So we're going to double click a little bit on that via our second level pivots, where for computes, we can, for instance, pivot based on spend by instance type and instances by instance type. And if we start with the spend pivot, then we can immediately see that all overspend was caused by the use of expensive M4 double extra large instances. Now, if we want to know how many of these came into use, then we can use the instances pivot. But let's say that we want to see that new information in the context of an offending cloud account. Contextualizing a report that way can be done by overlaying it with one or more filters. We have multiple default filters available, ranging from instance type to resource ID and account ID, and you can further enrich our filtering capabilities by providing tag information. In our example here, the filter for cost center is in fact tag-based. Now I'm going to use usage account ID here to contextualize the report for cloud account 3456. And now we see that in July, the team that owns this account started using five very expensive M4 double extra large instances. So we can now go to the team that owns this account and work with them to figure out if they really need to be using such an expensive resource type on an ongoing basis. Also note that with HCM Finops Express, it's easy to time slice billing data even to the level of a single day. And this allows you to pin down the exact day of a spend spike, which can help you to identify the root cause of the spike even better. Next up, I'm going to show you our cloud cost limits. Cloud cost limits are essentially spend limits that you can set at the level of a cloud account. And as you can see, I have multiple limits defined, ranging from 10K per month to 75K per month. Now, what's nice is that you can link cloud accounts from multiple different cloud providers to these spend limits. So across AWS, Azure, and Google. And this way, you can control overspend for different types of cloud accounts and subscriptions in the exact same way. So let's draw into the spend limit for 75K per month, because the red notification icon here signals that at least one account has gone over its limit. 
And not surprisingly, it is the AWS account starting with 3456, which we previously already identified as the main culprit for our recent overspend. So we can easily see by how much they have crossed the limit and also how many days they have left in the period. Now, when an account goes over its limit, we start sending out email notifications to stakeholders. And you can, of course, easily configure who gets these notifications here on the left. Now, cloud cost limits are month based, so they will reset every month and go back to zero so that a new buildup of cost can happen over the course of the next month. Sometimes, however, it can be interesting to see how cloud accounts have been behaving historically with regards to their limit. And those historical views are available in the cloud cost limit reports section of our cloud cost reports. So, for example, when I drill down into the history of the 75k cloud cost limit, and select the offending account again, then we see that historically they were doing very well and that their overspending behavior is a very recent evolution. However, when I drill down into the history of the 10K cloud cost limit, then we can see that here there is an account that so far never stayed within the limit. So we may want to go and talk to the team that owns this account to figure out why that is. So with these cloud cost limits, we help teams stay on track so that collectively, they don't blow up the budget for cloud spend for the larger business unit. Next up, let me show you how we help you to manage reservations. And reservations are essentially upfront purchases that allow you to run resources at a discounted rate. Now you can save a lot of money by purchasing such reservations, but from a return on investment perspective, it only makes sense to do this for resources that are going to run in your environment for longer periods of time typically one or three years. Now you can of course wait a year and see which resources are still around, but that leaves a lot of money on the table. What you really need to do is identify good candidates early, but that is very hard to do without something like machine learning. Luckily, we have machine learning on board to make reservation management fun and easy. Let's start with taking a look at reservation coverage. We show targets and actuals for each cloud type, but let me focus on AWS to explain this graph. So the top line shows you your coverable estate. So the percentage of your estate for which reservations make sense. The bottom line shows you your current actual coverage. And as you can see in our demo here, there's quite a gap, which is why our overall score, 44 out of 100, isn't very good. Now you can fix your score by bringing the bottom line as close as possible to the top line. But how do you do that? Well, very simple, by following our instructions. Simply click on see all recommendations and you get an overview of all reservation purchases that make sense for your environment, sorted in order of highest return. So whatever recommendation sits on top, that's the one you should start with. And as you work your way through the recommendations, over time, your actual coverage will match your coverable estate, providing you maximum savings with reservations. Next up, let me show you our proactive cloud cost management. Proactive cloud cost management is based on the idea that not all teams need direct access to cloud resources, and that by providing governance around cloud access, you can proactively prohibit teams from using overly expensive resource configurations or overly expensive regions and locations for deployments. The way you set up this additional governance is by combining our image aggregation feature with our self-service catalog. Via image aggregation, you can centrally broker access to public cloud services that are available on the AWS, Azure, and Google marketplaces. Let's say we want to broker access to a Tomcat server running on Azure. To do that, you first filter out all non-Azure offerings. Next up, you can use the search field on top to further narrow down the list of offerings. You select the offering that you want to publish to your teams, and here is where you can provide extra governance. For each offering, you can decide where it can be provisioned, so what locations and regions are allowed, and also which configuration options or instance types are permitted. You can double check these decisions in the pricing details pop-up, which shows you what each configuration is going to cost in each location. Once you're happy with this, Simply push the import button and confirm that you want to publish this offering. 
You can then add the offering to the HCMX FinOps Express built-in catalog and expose it to your teams. When these teams consume the offering, HCMX FinOps Express ensures that the governance policies that you established are applied when the service is provisioned. For all services that are provisioned this way, HCMX FinOps Express features an advanced financial module that tracks actual costs versus budgets at the level of your business units. So with our proactive cloud cost management, you can fix overspending by preventing it from happening in the first place. To wrap up today's demo, I'm also going to show you one of the new features we're working on, which is our aggregated cloud cost dashboard. This dashboard shows you at a glance your total managed cloud spend across multiple clouds, how this total cloud spend is trending versus last year, and then a breakdown of this cloud spend by provider for the current year, as well as for your recent history. This way, you can easily track changes in usage across the public clouds that you're working with, and you can see if your FinOps practices push your spend in the right direction.